if I'm camping somewhere where open fires are not allowed, um, I end up using a cook stove instead. So here's my kit for making good quality coffee uh, while camping in an area that doesn't allow fires. So my kit still consists of, we have the coffee scale, some coffee in a sealed dark bag with the air evacuator valve still intact on it and a grip stick to hold it closed. I have a gram, gram scale to weigh out 21 grams of coffee. I'm currently using Illy Intenso um, and I have a burr grinder. So it's a conical burr uh, grinder so I can get a good nice fresh grind on it. For the stove system, I'm using a Tokes alcohol stove, which is very small as you can see. And also there's a windscreen that comes with it and pot support, which folds down and fits inside the cup. So that goes together. And then the cup that I use fits just inside that. And this is a Snow Peak 600 milliliter uh, titanium cup. And most importantly, it has a pour spot. So for doing pour over coffee, this edge of the lid hooks on the front of the cup and then I can hold it while I pour. However, the entire contraption is a little hot after boiling water in it, so I have a piece of leather which I use to hold on to it and I can pour it without burning my fingers. To fuel the stove, um, I prefer a non-toxic fuel. So what I have here is I have ethanol, and this is Everclear 195, which has been diluted to 85% ethanol by volume by cutting it um, about 10 to 1 with water. So, well, that is one part water to 10 parts Everclear 195. And that gives me a mixture that both will still burn hot, but won't soot my pot. Uh, this pot is already quite sooted, but that is from us using it over a wood fire yesterday. So, um, again, uh, Everclear 190 uh, diluted to 85% ethanol. Makes a great stove fuel, doesn't soot my pot. And it can also be used as an antiseptic, like when I nick my finger. And also, you can uh, put it in 16 ounces of water with one of your favorite fizzy electrolyte tablets and have something which can be um, a nice refreshing cocktail at the end of a day where, when it's hot out. For the pour over system, I'm still using the this little GSI setup which clips on a cup and folds down flat with a paper filter. And the water I got, um, this just RO purified water from the uh, from the shop in this case it's just like aquafina or dasani or one of those um, and that's the setup so let's make some coffee all right so first we're going to grind some coffee so i take the base off of the grinder use it as a receptacle and i'm going to weigh out 21 grams of illy intenso coffee Seven, eight, nine grams. Twenty-one point three five grams. That'll work. And knowing that that is effectively at the two cup line means I don't really need to weigh it out in the future. I could just fill this to two cups and go from there. But it's nice to be precise. I pour it in the top and grind me some coffee. Okay, now that's ground, we'll dump it in the paper cone. I choose a paper cone with this because it filters out some of the fines and also some of the undesirable oils from my coffee making for a better better pour over
and there we go. We're ready to heat some water. All right, so it's time to heat up some water. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the ethanol. So when it, if you're using one of these Trangia bottle holders, open the valve and push the valve to release the air pressure, to equalize air pressure. Otherwise, if there's pressure in the bottle and you go to pour, you're going to spray alcohol everywhere, and that's not good for anybody concerned. So this is a 10 milliliter um, pet feeder. So this is for giving medicines to pets. It also works really well for measuring ethanol. So I'm gonna put 13 milliliters of this 85% mix into the Tokes Titanium alcohol stove. So that is 10. I'm just gonna put in another three a total of 13 milliliters of fuel and that will be enough to boil 16 ounces of water. So we'll go ahead and put 16 ounces of water in our cup and again this is the Snow Peak titanium cup with the hole in the side and the hooks which make it great for doing pour over. To light the alcohol stove, since we're in a burn ban area, we're going to be um, very safe and just using a lighter. So the stove is lit. You can't actually see the flame very well because it's daytime and it's ethanol. See a little, little flame going. So what happens is the inner wall will heat and then that will vaporize the ethanol, which will go between the two walls, um, both. Um, and then it basically turns into a blowtorch as it goes from burning just the latent vapors to actually kind of being a blowtorch. So I put the windscreen pot holder over it, which is also by Tokes and titanium. And then the cup will just fit inside the top. So it's, it's key that there's a gap between the shield and the bottom of the cup. That way the flame wraps around the cup, transferring as much energy as possible into the cup itself. And you could hear it. It looks, it sounds like a blowtorch going to work here. If you look at here, you can see that this alcohol stove is basically a blowtorch. So you can see the alcohol boiling, it's going up the sides through capillary reaction and heating rather rapidly. Okay, now that the water is at a roiling boil, you can move these other things out of the way and get to making some coffee. For this, I'm going to take it off the fire while it's still boiling, and we will let the stove burn out, and then we're going to do our pour over in about four minutes after the water has cooled to about 195 degrees Fahrenheit. Instead of letting it burn out, we could save this fuel by snuffing it by just putting the pot directly on the stove. It will put out the fire. Since the stove's still hot, that ethanol will probably evaporate, but at least there's no more fire happening. All right, the water's cooled a bit. Now we're ready to, to do our pour, pour over. So I'm gonna make sure the lid is securely on the cup. I'm gonna make sure I'm holding the cup with my pot holder. And then we're going to just do a little pour around the sides, wet the grounds and let them bloom.
And now that we're getting down there, you can see that starting with 16 ounces of water was just barely enough water to make a 12 ounce cup of coffee. That's because the filter soaks up some, the coffee soaks up some, uh, some gets boiled away. And we are done. So what I'm going to do is to take this off of this cup and put it in the my boil cup so the remainder can drip through making for um, as dry as possible a trash load to camp out or to pack out. So that's it. One cup of very wonderful camp coffee. Thanks for watching. This is just a quick uh, clip on how all this packs up for travel. So I have the uh, pot support, or the pot stand pieces, which are uh, Tokes Titanium. So what I first do is I stack these in a way that they sit comfortably together. What I do is I wrap them around the cup. I take these and I put it inside the boiling pot presses in like so. Then I take the pot stand, or the, uh, sorry, the stove, and I take the leather pot holder, and it fits inside like so. Next to that, I can put the lighter, and then I put the lid on that boil pot. I put it inside the cozy. I put the cozy lid in the cozy. I put the rubber band around it. And then I could take my pour over and I could fit that inside the top. Then from there, I take a sil nylon bag and I could run that over this whole system. Or I drop it inside of it. Probably easier. Then I take the pot support tent pegs, which are also titanium, and slip them in there. And the entire cook system packs down to, yeah, about that size. And my hands are not big. So that is my entire camp cooking system.